Team Red or Team Blue? Which one should you choose? My name is Ali Labaidli and welcome to Astra Pharma. So some of you may remember that I had a small refractor from William Optics, the GT81 IV, and I've used it quite often for some of my earlier reviews. Now I've actually sold that telescope, but along with it, the person that I was selling it to requested to have my color camera, the ZWO2600MC. I was very reluctant to sell my color camera because I used it interchangeably between my other telescopes, my Edge SD and my 135mm lens, but alas, he gave me an offer I couldn't refuse and I wasn't losing much money on it, so I relented, I sold him my telescope along with my color camera, but then I was left one one-shot color camera down. I actually like using one-shot color cameras, so I decided to use that money from that sale to buy another color camera, but this time I wanted to save a few bucks, so I went for the Toptec ATR2600 color. By now, a lot of you probably have heard of it, so I'm not going to ramble on about it. I'm just going to give you a brief review and tell you how I felt using it for the first time with my Edge HD. But before we take a look at the camera itself, let's do a quick unboxing. The camera comes with a 30mm M48 male to female extender, if my measurements are correct, a 1.25 inch nose piece, a 21mm male to female M42 adapter, and a 16.5 M42 male and M48 female extender. This spacer also comes with an M48 to M42 female converter. It also comes with a cover for the camera and an M42 female adapter that can be screwed directly on that camera. It also comes with a 12 volt 3 amp power supply with a standard 2.1 to 2.5 millimeter pin and a power cord to match. Finally, you have a 3.0 type B USB cable, all pretty standard apart from the power supply which doesn't come with other cameras. We then have the camera itself and on the back is the USB output and two USB type A inputs that you can use for your other equipment and accessories. And of course you have your indicator lights, these can actually be turned off while you image. So much like my previous camera, this also uses the IMX571 sensor, which is a well-regarded sensor by now, it's been tested and proven many many times over. The sensor has 0 amp glow, native 16-bit ADC for color depth, it also has cooling, which is very important for astronomy cameras, of course, I'm preaching to the choir here. It also states that it can cool down the sensor to 42 degrees below ambient, 42 degrees Celsius that is, which is quite a lot higher than the ZW0600MC. And finally, just for completion's sake, the camera is 26 megapixels and the pixel size is 3.76 microns. So to actually test the camera, I think I took it to its limit. I used an F7 telescope and I actually captured the dark reflection nebula M72, which is a highly dynamic nebula near Orion. So the results, impressive. The dynamic range allowed for a lot of excellent shadow recovery and the color fidelity was excellent right out of the box as well. While mono cameras still actually hold an edge, in my opinion, there's still a time and place for one-shot color cameras, so please know that if you are looking for a one-shot color camera, you do have other options other than ZWO. ZWO cameras are perfectly good, perfectly capable, but you still have other options. I actually found this camera on AliExpress for a few hundred dollars cheaper than the ZWO2600MC, so please know that you do have other options if you look hard enough. So you may have gathered actually that this camera is actually very similar to the ZWO2600MC, however one thing that did stick out to me was how fast this camera actually cools the sensor. While the ZWO might take 5-10 to 10 minutes to get it to the required temperature, actually 10 minutes is an exaggeration, maybe 5-6 minutes. <laughs> This camera actually does it in less than a minute. I think this is going to be excellent for the summer months here in Kuwait where the temperature actually stays above 40 degrees, sometimes even 50 degrees Celsius, even after sunset. So should you or should you not buy this camera? I think if you have it in your head that you will never use an ASI Air, you will stick with Nina or other image capturing software, then this is the right option for you. It's quite a bit cheaper. I think the build quality is a little bit better than ZWO cameras as well. I don't think you're going to be sacrificing anything if you choose this over the ZWO cameras. However, if you do want to use the ASI Air, and I do recommend people use the ASI Air, at least try it once in their lifetime because it's one of the best image capturing units and softwares out there now, then this camera might not be for everybody. Now, the Toptec Astro Station, I've used it recently, again, after five months of my initial review, and it's still quite bad. It's still, in my opinion, quite unusable. So. The ASI Air to me is still my number one go-to imaging image capturing unit. With my Edge HD, I still use Nina, I still use my old laptop, so it wasn't much of a choice for me. I wanted to save a few hundred dollars, so I chose the Toptec instead of the ZWO. And as you can see here, this is my final image of M72. I personally think it's one of my best images. It was well received by the astrophotography community. It received a top pick on Astrobin on my Instagram. People loved it. So this camera actually can perform if you know how to use it, if you use it well. I know that I'm oversampled here, but please don't kill me anyways please don't forget to like comment and subscribe this has been astra pharma and thank you for watching